Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 17th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from McLean, Virginia. Oracle today released its quarterly critical patch update, and with that, we have patches for over 300 different vulnerabilities. Before you get excited about the large number of vulnerabilities being addressed, remember this is across the entire portfolio of different applications released by Oracle, not just the database. However, there is one Java VM related flaw in the database that has a CVSS score of 9.8, allowing unauthenticated remote code execution. In addition, we still have a lot of log4j related vulnerabilities that are being addressed here. This has been sort of an ongoing theme over the last few critical patch updates. The underlying flaw goes back to 2017. There also have been a number of components like struts and such that Oracle applications rely on that are being updated with this critical patch update. So I would say nothing terribly exciting here from Oracle, but the difficult part usually is to figure out which of these patches do apply to you. And then we have a real embarrassing vulnerability in libssh, a library to implement SSH clients and servers. With SSH, typically the client sends an SSH2 message user auth request in order to start authentication. With libssh, if your server is using the library, all you need to do is send instead an SSH message user auth success message and well, you are lost logged in. So in short, all the client has to do is say, hey, I'm authenticated and the server will believe you. Now, libssh is actually not used much for SSH servers, which somewhat limits the impact of this vulnerability. This is not your default library that's being used to implement SSH servers. OpenSSH does not use libssh. There are actually uh, two dozen or so different SSH libraries. LibSSH does appear to be used quite commonly in clients. The GitHub client, for example, uses it. KDE uses it. I don't believe KDE uses it. So patch it as it comes up, but if you're not using any servers that rely on LibSSH, then you should be okay. Now, okay, while I would expect better from an SH library, finding vulnerabilities like this in various devices is probably no big surprise. Latest example being uh, vending machines. In a blog post at Hacker Noon, a researcher shows how you can actually manipulate a mobile app that's used to pay at vending machines. Now, one problem vending machines have is that they deal with a lot of small amounts. So using credit card transactions, for example, for each individual amount is quite expensive. So a preferred solution is to actually have a mobile app, transfer money, for example, from a credit card to the mobile app occasionally, and then use that money in smaller amounts at the vending machine. The problem, however, here is that the balance is being maintained within the app on the user's device. And this is exactly the weakness here. While they did implement some sort of anti-reversing protections, in the end, they were not successful and it is possible to extract the database that tracks your current balance, manipulate it, and then send an updated database back to the application. Probably the only solution for this particular problem would be to keep a server-side wallet and not keep it on the client itself and just keep some sort of key in order to authenticate to the server to unlock a specific wallet. It looks like the days are numbered for TLS 1.0 and 1.1. Today, Microsoft, Google, Mozilla, and Apple announced that they will stop supporting TLS 1.0 and 1.1 in their browsers as of March 2020. So yes, uh, you got about a sort of one and a half years left here, but already according to the blog posts, it would affect less than 1% of current connections. 
One of the problems that I have seen in the past with browsers stopping support for some of these outdated crypto protocols is, and then sort of to continue some of the earlier story, well, devices that don't support these newer crypto protocols. And so as a result, you may then actually have to use unencrypted HTTP connections to connect to them instead of the weak HTTPS connections. Not sure if this is actually a preferred solution, but then again, by no longer supporting these weak protocols, you avoid a lot of downgrade issues. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.